Hi, I'm CJ and this is my RC channel. In this video, I am continuing the build on the Kyosho MP10E and uh, it's time to build shocks. So I'm gonna be opening up this package. I'm not gonna be using the stock springs that are provided in the kit. Um, I'm following a build and I'm gonna be using a uh, red rear and a gray front. Um, let me get you part numbers here. Um, there's your first one, IF350, 6514. And now oh, that one is uh, IF. S002 8515 and uh, I've really covered this up here but uh, rest assured it is the red rear I don't have a spring rate for you off the top of my head on that uh, in the rear I'm going to be running 550 and in the front, I'm going to be running 450. And I'm using this Team Kyosho silicone shock oil. Um, didn't go with Kyosho oil for a particular reason. Uh, just was able to get a nice price on it, so I went with that. Um, now, I may be switching out the O-rings <clears throat> for the, uh, the shock shaft stack with uh, some... Uh, O-rings I already have that are X-type. In other words, instead of being a round uh, ring of silicone, it's uh, shaped like an X and then wrapped in a circle so that you've got two little edges contacting and the inner uh, portion of the X can hold some lube um, and that makes for a smoother shock action. Now, I'm, these are uh, TLR product. Um, I'm not sure if they're going to fit. They may, and if they do, I'm going to go ahead and use them. If not, I'll build up with the stock ones for now, but I'm going to be looking around for some, uh, some X-type O-rings because these definitely make a big difference in the amount of stiction uh, that your shock action is going to have. So, I need some of this. This is O-ring grease. Um, I used to... Uh, swear by um, the uh, associated green slime but I've moved over to the uh, the one up blue some uh, couple of years back and uh, definitely like this stuff um, there's a bunch of companies out now that make uh, o-ring specific greases um, it used to be that uh, the green slime was the the only product available and that was you know a good while long while ago but it uh, it was the the go-to grease for a long time and uh, of course I've got my shock stand down I got a towel to work on and we are into uh, this should be bag seven And yep, number seven. I'll be putting these in a, uh, a box with a bunch of uh, springs for eighth scale buggies and other vehicles. So. I'm going to need to take a minute or two and cut all of these out. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and uh, probably use these pistons. These are a machined piston. Uh, they're going to be a better quality piston than, than these. Um, even if you trim these out very carefully, you never get them 100% round and, and the molding process isn't always perfect. Um, I'll probably be needing the spacers and uh, some other items off this. So I'm going to just go ahead and cut everything off of the tree. Um, we've got our bladders. We've got our uh, little dust boots. Um, 
Not sure what those are. Figure that out shortly. Um, lots of little parts in this bag. Um, again, not sure what these are, but uh, figure it out. We got our machined spacers there. And uh, some little clips. So, looks like we've got nice metal caps here. And uh, they've got a threaded bleed hole, which is very nice. Definitely like that, preferred over plastic, definitely. And I wanna take these off and put the O-rings in place. So um, I've got a bunch of st stuff I need to obviously cut out, lay out, organize. And uh, so I'll do that off cam and I'll come back on in just a moment and go through this process, I'll go ahead and build one shock to show you all the little ins and outs of these shocks. They're a lot different than a lot of the shocks I uh, normally use from like TLR or Associated. Um, so I'll go into these in detail. For example, uh, the stack here is held in by a clip, not a screw on cap. Um, so that's a little different and uh, that's going to probably require needle nose pliers to do that properly. So uh, let me get going on the cleanup and organization. So let me just go over some things. These grub screws are going to be used when we are mounting the shock absorbers onto the uh, a arm it's the lower mount that's also where these guys here come into play as well as these little uh, uh, balls here and um, we are not going to need uh, these that um, these are the ones that get cut off of the tree they're just uh, cheap as I mentioned earlier we're not going to be using those uh, likewise these rings are uh, just like holdovers uh, from you know previous iterations uh, same thing with these little plastic spacers again they're just uh, cheap ones that uh, you would have to like trim and cut and smooth and everything else whereas we've got nice machined pieces here and here to make up for those okay so um, again the grub screws are for the mounting uh, these screws here, these um, are going to use these washers, and those are going to be for the bleed hole on the cap. Um, I'm not going to be using these O-rings. I'm going to be using this X-type ring here. As you can see in the, the X is, you know, there's also an inner groove. It's hard to show you. Um, and then we have two different size bolts here. Um, the uh, small ones we're going to be using to mount our pistons. So that's the first thing we need to do is mount the pistons. So uh, take your shock shafts and you're going to use one of these thin metal washers. And then you're going to take one of these conical shaped pistons and put the curved shape facing downwards and we're going to take our screw here just see yep yeah. uh, that's a five millimeter just fyi Go ahead and tighten that down. You don't have to get crazy tight. Just uh, get it down so that the nylon is going to do its thing and it's not moving. 
So I'm gonna pause for a moment, do all four of those. Once I'm done with those, I'm gonna take my caps here, and it's really nice they give us these hatch marks here, a single hatch and a double. It makes it easier for you to tell if, you've, um, if you're have if you adjusting your shocks out in the field and you do not have any way to measure them. Um, you can just do it by rotations, so it's easy to tell if you've done half or a whole rotation. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the O-rings, I'm putting them inside, and then we can go ahead and thread these up. Now make sure that you don't cross thread it going in. The O-ring can make it a little hard to get started correctly, but as you can see it's easy enough. Uh, it's the kind of thing you'll just get used to doing. Um, it's not a bad idea to put a little bit of lubrication on these just to help them move a little easier. They're always going to be more than stiff enough. Um, sometimes I do it, and sometimes I don't. I'm going to go ahead and do it in this case. It just makes them easier to deal with. Anyway, um, I'm just going to use a, a, a nice light lubricant for that. And it doesn't take much. So, I'll go ahead and pause. And once I have gone ahead and done the O-rings and mounted the pistons on all the shock shafts i'll be back okay uh i'm gonna go ahead and do another one for you that is amazingly smooth with those x rings so let me just do another build up Okay, the X-rings didn't work. Um, not completely surprised, uh, but I was hopeful. Uh, I guess I'll have to go looking to see if I can find some uh, in the correct size for this application. Same basic procedure here. we go. Let's 
so now I can put the eyelet back on and fill it with fluid and move around to the rest of those so uh, again that's showing you how one is done actually uh, wasn't paying close attention there put one of the uh, rear shock shafts into the short front shock body so keep your eye on stuff like that as you're doing your assembly now one thing I wasn't sure about in the instructions they don't really show us how these boots go on and I'm thinking that this might be a good time to do it before the eyelet goes on. Let me just look in the directions and see if they actually show those. Yeah, they tell you to trim them and slide them over top of the eyelets. I'm kind of curious as to whether that's really a good idea because there's some pretty sharp little ends on here. I think it's probably better to do them ahead of time. I think they want us to trim them as well. It says cut according to size length. Well, that doesn't tell you much, does it? I guess I'll try it their way as far as how to put them on but I think it would probably be better to slide these things on now just give it a test fit is that the long or the short is the short and it looks like you really need to hack a good bit off it okay I'll try doing this after the fact the way they recommend Oh, just FYI, the, um, I did put a little lubricant on the O-rings when I put those on. They did go on a lot easier. I used uh, Perpetual Motion. It's a super light ball bearing oil. Um, very nice light oil. It's great for applications like that. So you don't want to fill it all the way up when you're doing this first stage because you don't want it bubbling out over the top on you. Um, you want to raise the piston and then pull down quickly and that should clear most of the air. Yeah, so now I just need to set this aside and wait for the bubbles to rise. While I'm waiting for that, I can go ahead and take care of uh, the other shocks. Okay, the shocks are all uh, redone with new the proper fitting seals, and uh, this one is complete. It's got a little bit of rebound to it, which is fine. It's got good action. Now, I can always ease off that um, the rebound if I don't want that in there um, by loosening up the cap a little more and 
um, get it to the point where it's oozing out of this little hole right here in the side of the cap and then just compress the piston a little bit and push a little bit of fluid out. The, uh, the rebound is basically caused by the diaphragm and uh, having a little bit of rebound can be a good thing. It just depends on how you want the car to handle. So I'm going to go ahead and set it up like that for the time being. Now, one of the things they recommend you do is in uh, step 44, the second section, they say shrink the spring two or three times before attaching the spring to the shock. In other words, fully compress it. So basically do that, two, three. One, two, three. And I've seen that same kind of recommendation on other types of cars and uh, I generally follow that procedure. So let's see, that's the short one. Okay, those two are the long ones. These are the short ones. And I'm not sure if they expect us to... Yeah, it looks like there's enough room here to have the, the rubber be down over the edge of this and have this come in and clamp down over top of the, uh, over the boot. So we want to trim this so that it is basically, I'd say about to the hole, maybe a teeny bit more. Um, We want to. We don't want it to have it be in the way, but we don't want it to um, to come off either. So, let's see. I'm gonna say there. And I'm gonna trim the other one to the same size. So now, take one of these, we're going to stretch it down over this eyelet here. really is hard to make this thing slide over there. I guess the best thing to do is just work it a little bit at a time. Yeah, see part of the problem is my fingers have a lot of oil on them by using this paper towel. It's nice and dry. It's helping me slide this down into place. There we go. So that's where I've got it cut to. Now I can put on the spring. Now remember that little, um, this little key shape thing right there. You want to have that facing into the slot here.
I want to slide that in. And now we can slide that down over top. There we go. So there's our boot. Nice and sealed. You don't have to worry about it getting dirt and grime on the shock shaft. It's a nice system. And now we can pop one of these eyelets or one of these uh, pivot balls into the eyelet. And this is one of the places this wrench just comes in so handy. So there is our lower eyelet. And then these plastic pieces, these funny shaped things, those actually pop in the top. Now I recommend um, having the uh, bleed screw face out. Um, you always want it facing the high side. Um, and our shocks are gonna angle like this. So we're gonna go ahead and push this in. There we go. So that's our little bushing. And one shock is built. So I can set this aside and move on to the next one. I'm gonna do the rest of this off camera. Um, you've seen the process. I'll go over all these items and how they come into play in the next video or later in this video. Okay, it is time to install shocks. Now, they want the flat side of the plastic piece facing out. The uh, part that gets crimped and slid in faces inward. They also recommend having the, um, uh, the bleed screws face inward. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it their way. So first what we want to do is let's check the build sheet for the shock location. Okay, it's both of them go to the outer hole. So we're going to take one of these pieces here and uh, we're going to use one of those grub screws into the hole that is above where this slides through. So the grub screw is going to drop into this little uh, cutaway here and capture this rod and keep it from coming out. It's a nice uh, mounting system because you don't need to remove the grub screw completely. All you need to do is back it off a few turns and then you can pull the rod out. So I'm just going to twist it until it touches down. You can tell right away when that's happening. And then we just put on our lock nut here there's no washer or any anything else necessary to retain it and um, you don't need to tighten it down hard you're just going to tighten it till it stops it's going to stop up against uh, this piece right here and uh, you know it's a ni nylon lock nut so you don't have to worry about that uh, coming loose you don't need any loctite
So we are just about done with this kit. Um, I mean, there's there's a good bit left to do, but the assembly is going to be finished after these uh, shocks go on. I mean, there's going to be a few little knickknacks here and there, but um, mainly it's going to be soldering wires, uh, setting up the battery leads, um, tuning the suspension for first run, and, uh, and then it's going to be off to do some testing. Sorry, there's not much to see here with this big plastic wing in the way. But it's very much exactly like the front shocks, which you hopefully had a better view of. Just uh, tightening a nylon lock nut at the uh, top of the shock and putting in the uh, grub screw down here at the bottom. And I am about to be finished. Okay. Gonna have to add some preload to these front shocks. They seem a lot softer than the rear. And I'm gonna have to, uh, the weight of batteries is also gonna have a big effect. And it looks like those, you know, the batteries are gonna be close to the front too. So definitely gonna have to add a little preload up here. May even wanna go with something a little stiffer in the front spring, but I'm probably gonna go with the, uh, with the recommended setup I've got here and uh, see where that goes. Looks good. Okay, so let's just see. Just do kind of a quick check over. Um, we've got front and rear shocks. We've got uh, our steering system all set up. We got front and rear sway bars. Um, Got all the drive shafts in, and everything is good to go. So I've got a body to prep, and uh, I've got some soldering to do, and that's it. We're going to be on the way. So, and that's nice. Let's see, how am I going to run this around? No, I'm probably going to... I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off, lift, uh, the, remove the battery tray and run the sensor cable under the battery tray over to here because it plugs in the side of the motor or possibly, the yeah, it can plug in the back, but that's not a good place to put it because of the, the steering tower here uh, for one of the uh, turnbuckles. So I'm going to go ahead and use the side port and I'm going to go ahead and pull this battery box. Is that the only screws? Let's see. One, two, three. I used a lot of titanium and aluminum hardware on here. At least I did it where I had it, where I could. Um, for example, these battery boxes, the battery trays are held on with aluminum screws. They're, uh, they're just plastic and uh, the aluminum, the plastic would give way before these three screws would. So there's no reason to, uh, to use steel there or even titanium. There we go.
I really should be using the MIP tools on these aluminum pieces. They just, uh, they're going to preserve the hex heads longer. The aluminum, that's what you got to be careful about with aluminum is stripping them out. And these MIP wrenches are just a higher level of tolerance. And these uh, just cheapo wrenches that I was using a moment ago. It's not a bad tool, they're just, they're not a $30 wrench. So now the sensor wire is nicely routed. So these are our plus and our minuses. I'm going to need to rig a battery splitter and A, B, and C here are really going to be close. And there's A is a little bit close, but there's nothing I can do about that. I think in the end it'll be fine. It's, it's still got room to, to stretch. So just got to be careful about when I put the battery in. And I've got a power switch, which I'll probably run through the body somewhere. See about that or just uh, put it under the, you know, I could put it right here. Like that, so I can just reach under here and just lift the body enough to be able to reach the switch. That would work. Now, one of the things I didn't do with this car was go all out for lightness. Um, this is my first eighth scale, and I went ahead and did a, a good bit of titanium um, as far as hardware goes, but I didn't do things like uh, go around looking for carbon fiber shock towers. Uh, this plate could be replaced with a, a carbon fiber piece. Um, uh, the turnbuckles could be uh, replaced with uh, titanium turnbuckles. Um, that's, that's about it. So uh, there's not that much you can do to lighten these. Um, and as I recall, these aluminum pieces were, you know, they're chamfered. They've got a few holes in them to lighten them up. They're pretty minimal in their design. So... Um, you know, they've got big cutaways here and here. Uh, so I don't think that they would dramatically change the, uh, the weight on the car. A lot of the aluminum pieces are lightened. Like you look at this piece right here, it's, it's got cutaways to, uh, to reduce the weight. And, uh, so that's, that's fairly minimalist. Um, there's not much, uh, aluminum hardware there there you couldn't possibly make a carbon fiber piece that would be much lighter um you know this piece here this piece here the two towers and uh half the motor mount over here the um the diff this side is plastic we got plastic here plastic here so there's not much that can be done to lighten it up so my uh, my camber is way off in the rear. So there's there's a lot of tuning to do, and I'll I'll pull out a tuning board, get out all the um, the tools, and uh, do the full rundown uh, when I get to that point. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please click like and please subscribe to my channel.